Hey everybody, today we're continuing our discussion about log. Uh, this time we're shooting interior. So this shot probably looks like garbage and you're saying to yourself, Oh God, this looks like garbage. Time for a little... No, no, no! Baby Seal Troll Force. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go over a couple things about this. So we, we've seen outside footage a lot and it's really easy to test a lot of content outside. But clearly this shot is too dark to be used. So I have uh, the vlog camera or whatever. <laughs> That's so weird when you're talking about log. I have the blogging camera, whatever this one is. And then I have this one back here that I'm out of focus on. I just wanted to show you, we have two separate cameras running uh, to kind of test this. So the idea here is uh, that you've got to kind of pay attention to what you're doing no matter where you are in this space. So let's say you had to shoot an interview and this was the office you had, or if you're doing a wedding or any other piece of content that's not on a super high end level and you don't have a ton of light, so available light wise, this is terrible. It's awful, it's garbage. So what we wanna do is just look at our meter, which we have here, the trusty meter. So we have our meter and let's just take a quick reading from my face. So let's see where I'm at. Typically you can bring your meter to the eye. Look at that, I'm at a 1.4 and that is uh, false. I'm darker than that. So I'm a 1.4 to that camera, but on this one, I'm barely gonna read. Yeah, I'm at a one. So uh, I'm three stops under where I should be based on what the GH5 is saying, which I'm using for the vlog camera. And then the other camera back here is something else, doesn't matter. Um, point is, uh, it's underexposed and it's not working. So what we have to have a conversation about is, how do you deal with this? Well, let's start step, steps, steps. Let's start in steps. Okay, so we've uh, walked a lamp in this time. So we still have our practicals there and there. They're adding just a little bit of ambiance in the background, but what we have lighting wise is I just walked in a single source. I just walked in this Kino and this Kino is a, uh, a four foot tube. You can kind of cheat these, poor man's them. If you need to, you can get them from like Home Depot, but this is a, a pro grade light, but it's a Kino bulb. Um, and basically the output on this light from where I'm currently standing, uh, it's probably gonna be around a two eight. Yeah. So yeah, we're around a two eight. So, I'm waiting for it to focus. So yeah, so now we're sitting at a 2.8 and you can see that the, the lighting's better. I've got a little bit more exposure. Uh, the bottom end is not being blown out. We're not losing any detail. There's no clipping going on anywhere. Probably clip when I point it at the light, but there's the lamp itself. Dawson hiding in the corner over there. Say hello, Dawson. What's up, folks? There he is, the Dawson. So basically we walk this Kino in and the idea here is if I were doing the interview or someone were interviewing me and I needed that, I've got a little bit of splash light back here, something here, is it perfect? No, but it's enough to at least lift the room up. And that's what you have to consider when shooting log inside, is you have to be able to lift the room up overall. You can't just walk in and deal with it. Now, in a wedding type environment, in one of those kind of scenarios, how are you gonna do that? Well, that's my point. If you're shooting log in a very run and gun scenario, you're not gonna be able to throw up lights typically unless you have like a staged little area, like some little spot where they let you like get uh, video profiles of people walking through. So bringing in lights may not be something that is doable for you. So just keep in mind that at the end of the day, uh, shooting log interior is going to force you to deal with lights. And another example of that is these caves. So the caves, obviously, this is raw footage. There's no grade. This is a work print of heirloom. There's no color correction. There's no noise reduction on these shots. Um, if you watch the final print, you'll see a pretty big difference between the two. Um, this is just more or less straight log with a little bit of what we call a work LUT. It's just something we throw on there so that I don't have to stare at the milkiness of pure log. Uh, you can see in the background there on that hallway shot, that is not daylight, nor is that daylight pumping through on the left third there. Uh, this is all done with lighting and it was battery powered lights because the crew in this was me and Jeff. Uh, we don't let our actors do that kind of stuff. So we had uh, about a, I think it was like a thousand watt or somewhere around that equivalent of a 1K's worth of light coming through on some of those, uh, those um, cat lights we love so much. You can see the cat light down there in the bottom corner. You can just barely see the edge of it, but that's what is generating that light. It's also illuminating this room. Now, we do have sunlight in this space. The far back end, the opposite side of this is sunlight. That blue area where he just put the map up here, this, this polyurethane map, 
those are both sunlight elements. That is natural daylight coming through. However, it was cloudy uh, in some shots and others it wasn't. You can see that shaft of light behind them. We dressed that in. To get this shot here, we basically took one of those little bitty lights, those little battery powered lights and popped it in and just cranked it through the side there. And you can see it kind of dumping in uh, just enough light to get the idea across. Again, it's not about always having him in focus um, because you're gonna see his face in a narrative sense, you're gonna see him for a while. There's that other one where the daylight is coming through. You can see my hazer is starting to fade there. We did add haze and haze does bring up the uh, general light inside of the space. All right, so that scene was shot in a cave log, uh, 6K high res anamorphic uh, and we were at a 2.8 is where we were, so we jumped between 400 and 800 ISO, and I think there's three or four noise reductions in that entire sequence. And the point is, sometimes you have to consider when shooting log that it's not necessarily about the perfect exposure of the subject, as it is the, the surroundings you know, around them. So that hallway element, that background shot, that was lit, as I said, that was lit with one light shining in. Was there some daylight bleeding in? A Little bit, not a ton. But the idea was, if you need to use a silhouette, use a silhouette, bring a lamp in, whatever you gotta do to make it work. That's in a narrative sense. But again, if we're just talking about shooting in a general sense, as you can see now, I have a little more detail because now I can shoot 800. There's not a ton of fear of noise. Is this perfect? No, but I could probably deal with this a little bit better than I could with log. Uh, me personally, I'm not afraid of noise reduction. So I wouldn't have an issue doing noise reduction. But the bigger kicker is right here, I can just do that and suddenly blow you out with my paleness. But in all honesty, I can just bring that lamp and you can see now from a lamp perspective, it's way brighter and there's definitely way more detail. It's not a perfect frame by any means. That lamp is off now, all kinds of junk, but you still can see that the, the, the lighting elements are here, they're available and you can utilize them. Just a simple lamp. Even if you gotta walk a house lamp in, just figure out how you're gonna do it. You can buy these bulbs, you can buy these old bulb sockets to, uh, like from Home Depot, get yourself some schmutz or as we've talked about before, parchment paper and they're little clamp lights. They put in a 100 watt bulb, get a couple of those, attach them to a stand or a broomstick, I don't really care what you gotta do, but you can bring in more light that way and make it kind of decoy looking, like you could hang the bulb down into the frame that serves dual purpose, whatever you gotta do. The point is with log, if you wanna get those really great exposures on the interior of a set or a house or a location, just remember you're gonna need more light. And don't look at it as a way of just, okay, I can shoot log and I can get more exposure. No, it's gonna be a little bit harder actually, in my opinion. Look at it as a way of how can I utilize log to my best ability. So if you absolutely can't get more light in the room when you survey it, or you look on your waveform monitor, which the GH5 has, and I have it up right now, I can see it's in the bottom corner for me. If you're not getting great looking images through that waveform, because who cares what the screen looks like, then you're probably not getting great looking images anywhere else. One more thing. So with specifically with things like the GH5, uh, the red is different, the Alexa is different because when you're shooting raw, it's a whole different beast. But with the GH5, for example, one thing to keep in mind that is really, really important is the protection of your lighting, of your subject. So you basically want a human being to be roughly around 42 IRE on your waveform monitor. Just consider that close to the middle, just one little line off the middle line. You want your highlights to not hit that top solid line. You want them to be below that. In fact, you want them to be two times below that. So you really want to be two tick marks down, which is going to be 80. You really want to shoot just below 80 if you can, like 78, 79, somewhere in that space. If you do that, you're really well protected with your highlights. Then your bottom floor, your darkest element in the frame, it needs to be above 10 IRE. It's technically 7.5, but I can't see that on the scope on this scope that is. So I just shoot for 10 and, and you get even better results if you could actually have your darkest areas, your shadow areas be above that. If you're shooting into true black, like I mean the darkness of night, it's gonna floor out on you. That's okay, that's part of it. You're not gonna be able to elevate a dark scene without it. So just keep those, those little notes in mind. Add light to log on interior shots. It'll make a huge difference. Consider protecting where you need to be. Your subject is the most important, so keep them at 42 IRE if you can. If they hit 50, fine, that's great. That's not the end of the world. You're probably gonna get a better exposure off the bottom, but you really wanna make sure that your subject, the, the, the object you're trying to film is perfect. If the object is an interior, I suggest trying to lift the bottom floor up as much as you can and potentially sacrifice highlights if you're in that relationship all about balance. Log is nothing but balance. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell us what you want to see. We'll be around on Tuesday for the live stream, hanging out, talking about stuff, Baby Seal Troll Force, everything's awesome. No! Yes, it is. No! Yes, it is. 
No. Yes, it is. That's going to do it. See you guys later.